This is episode number 14 of the Silver Track Extra. Thanks for tuning in to the Silver Track Extra, your source for the best tips, tricks, and how-tos to dominate the security industry. Helping you improve your business, win more contracts, and crush your competition. Here are your hosts, Chris Anderson and Johnny Page. What's up, everybody? Johnny Page here, co-host of the Silver Track Extra, and we're here on episode number 14, where we're going to talk about four things you have to avoid when working with your customers. But before we do that, I want to give you a couple of key uh, points as far as where you can find us online. So you can follow us on Twitter at Share Silver Track. That's Silver Track without a K. You can also find us on Facebook or on LinkedIn. Across all of those platforms, you'll be able to receive updates from SilverTrack as far as our blog posts, additional content like webinars, uh, eBooks, and then also these podcasts as well. You can also, as far as our podcast, you can find us in iTunes where we are currently a five-star podcast with over 30 five-star reviews. Thank you guys so much for contributing. For those of you that have reviewed, for those of you that haven't, head over to iTunes and leave us a review. It's a great way to make sure that our show is always growing and that we are hearing your voice and implementing your feedback. We're also in Stitcher Radio. If you have Stitcher, the Stitcher Radio app, uh, you can find us in there, add us to your favorites list, and then you can always visit us online. So the show notes for every episode are at silvertracksoftware.com slash, and then the episode number. So for episode number 14, we've got silvertracksoftware.com slash 14. That's where you'll find a really well-written article on each episode, which oftentimes takes us into a deeper dive on the subject that we're covering. So without any further to do, let's head into the featured conversation where we're going to be talking about the four things you must avoid when working with your customers. But before we do that, let's hear from our sponsors at Paperless Proposal. Does your security business need to create business proposals to win clients? Are you frustrated by how much time and resources it takes to create and manage your proposals? If yes, I want to introduce you to Paperless Proposal Software. With Paperless Proposal Software, you can easily create impressive business proposals in minutes. And Paperless Proposal Software allows you to quickly and easily track and manage all of your proposals. Get a free demo at www.paperlessproposal.com forward slash silvertrack. All right, everyone, here we are in the feature conversation of episode number 14 here on the Silver Track Extra. And today we're talking about four things to avoid when dealing with your customers. So, Chris, we're going to narrow down. Of course, there's tons of things we should avoid, but today we're going to narrow down on four of the things that we see popping up most often here in the security industry. The first of which, the number one thing that you should avoid when dealing with your customers is avoid having an emotional reaction. And Chris, it can be a really easy thing to do in this industry that seems to try your patience at all hours of the day to not react emotionally. Um, so Chris, wh- why is that such a, uh, a thing to, that we need to avoid when working with our customers? Well, you want to keep the contract, right? <laughs> that's, <laughs> plain, that's plain and simple there now. And I'll tell you, uh, those of you Silver Track Nation, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about when I say this. The apartment communities and the HOA communities, the board members, how painful is that to try to keep your, your reactions in check, right? When you go to a meeting and you're being accused of not providing patrol or providing services when you know you have, right? And you have to... You have to sit there and you have to eat it, right? That's, that's what we call it, just sit there and eat in it. So just as mentioned, we have to avoid that emotional reaction, absolutely. We have to be there to be open, and that requires body language to accept everything that's coming in, and you, you just have to, you have to take it. You have to learn what your client's what is, what is the issue at, at hand, basically? Yeah, and one thing that you'll realize looking back is that we would when we do make those emotional decisions, a lot of time they're like – uh, driven by like short-term motivation where you'd always look back and if you could redo the situation you would handle it differently so having like the patience the maturity and the resolve to to understand the situation know that in the long term this reacting emotionally to this situation whether it's good bad whatever 
reacting in a non-professional way could sacrifice the long-term success of this of yeah, this it, contract or, or yeah. this relationship too. So, and I know there's several situations, Chris, we do it all the time. Even in our business, this is just for business in general, not just for the security industry. But when you react emotionally, a lot of times you can jeopardize a contract in a way that you wouldn't normally do if you just let time go by and, and just respond in a professional manner. Yeah. And I'll give you some other advice too. The, you know, what will save you from having an emotional reaction or being surprised. All right. I call it is that, you know what you need to, before you go there, have your ducks in a row, talk to your operations people and make sure and, and understand completely what's going on with the contract. Cause the last thing you want to do is get there and be embarrassed because you don't really understand what took place or what happened. So a lot of the times it's something that just took place that night. Right. So make sure you follow with everybody and then get there Get to the meeting about five minutes before the time. Evaluate the office. Take a look. Look at you, look at the person you're going to talk to. Maybe when you walk in the meeting, it's, hey, how was your day? How things are going? A lot of people are going to give you that body language, and they're going to make those comments and tell you that you know they're not happy up front. So you can prepare yourself about the, the, the type of meeting you're going to have, especially when it comes to a board meeting. So be prepared when you go in. That's just some of those things I've learned when I, when I go to the meetings. Yeah, well, even when you're – even if you get caught off the cuff and you're on the phone, a quick – like filter to run this sort of is the way that I'm about to react. Am I going to appreciate this in a month or even in a week? Am I going to, am I going to be glad that I acted the way I did right now? Most of the time, if you answer that question, you're going to handle it a little bit differently and avoid making those quick emotional reactions. So Chris, number two thing to avoid really not acknowledging the customer situation when those confrontational situations arise, right? So when we're, when we're working with our customers, they need to understand that we know that something's wrong. They need to feel heard. So we can't be quick. We can't become defensive very quickly. We just have to make sure that they feel heard no matter what the situation is, because that's going to really clear the air for us to resolve the issue and get down to repairing the relationship, no matter what it takes very quickly. Yeah, you need to check your ego at the door. A lot of the problems with a lot of security companies are that sometimes the owner, the manager is taking offense to what's being told to them. So they want to they wanna immediately say, well, that's not what we do. We have, you know, well, I've got supervisors out there. We've checked the officers. This is the way we do things. You need to listen to what they're telling you. And, you know, you've heard the story, the customer's always right. Well, you're going to hear today that a lot of the time that's changing, that thought process is changing. But you got to be open to listen because you're going to learn from whatever they're telling you. Yeah, and so one tidbit on that and one tip here is to reciprocate their their intensity for the issue. If they call you in a panic, don't act completely lackadaisical, like, eh, whenever it gets done, it'll get done. You need to reciprocate the intensity to let them know that you actually hear them, that you care, and that you're willing to respond with the same intensity that they have, right? That doesn't mean you have to go overboard, but just making them feel heard will make it on their end, they'll feel like you're an advocate, like that you care about what's going on and that you'll do the best you can to make sure that you resolve the issue. That alone will make sure that you you keep the contract or at least go a long way to it, right? Yeah. And I used to tell my clients, you know, for an example, I always use the term Becky. So for today, I'd say, you know, Becky, I hear what you're telling me. I'm taking notes right now. And what I'm going to do is how can I respond to back? I'm going to respond back. Can I get back to you within the hour? What works best for you? Would you like me to call you? Do you want me to send you an email? I'm going to do my follow-up now, and, and I will figure out what the situation is, and I will get back. So how would you like me to do that? And as long as you're telling them how you're going to get back and when you're going to get back, it will diffuse the situation most of the time. And then make sure you follow up. Yeah, which leads us to we really have to – number the third thing we need to avoid when dealing with customers is over-promising. We absolutely cannot overpromise and underdeliver. And you probably hear this over and over again, it, 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 no matter what uh, business site teaching you look into. But this is so foundational and so critical that it is repeated so often. Like we have to deliver what we promise, right? It's better to set the bar low or to respond in over time, and maybe it takes longer for you to find out whether or not you can complete the task that they're requesting, but we've got to, we've got to make sure that we over deliver versus over promising. Right, Chris? Yeah, I did that all the time. And if I, you know, I, I didn't care if it came to a proposal or a problem, right? I'd always get back to them sooner than expected, right? But give yourself enough room because things happen. And the last thing you want to do is cut yourself short when you have a, 
when you have a problem and you can't get back. It's just going to make things worse. So always keep that in the back of your mind. And this means that, Chris, sometimes saying yes isn't always the best. Sometimes we've got to say no to preserve the relationship because it would do more damage to say no now than it would to say yes and not be able to deliver. Yeah, right? and your clients, absolutely. And your clients will respect that. I mean, how many people tell them no? Not too many people. Yeah. A lot of people. I've won more contracts that way by telling people no in service. No, I can't do that, right? Yeah. <laughs> or it's, you, it's, you'd be amazed, but they said, really? You can't? I said, no, I, I really can't. To be, you know, being honest with you, this is the time frame. We, we cannot do that. I want to make sure that we can provide the service as much as I'd like to have the contract. We can't be there for you. And yeah. uh, they, they, res- they respect that. Especially if it's genuine, Chris. I, I can imagine, and I know the situation comes up quite often. Maybe you're asked to lower your price, or maybe you're asked to uh, compromise in the, in the type of officer that you're putting on site. And to just be really genuine with the customer and say, look, I take pride in the product and the service that we put out on site. And for this for whatever the, the constraints are here, whatever the requirements, I just can't do that. And I just can't feel comfortable with what we're putting out. That goes a long, long ways into to really establishing a quality relationship and protecting the quality of service that you're putting out on, on the property. Yeah. Have you ever heard that people want what, you, what they can't have? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's a good it's point. Very true. That, that, yeah, it's every time. So number four thing we want to avoid when dealing with our customers is under-communicating. Right, so equally as damaging as overpromising would be just not communicating the expectations. Um, and, and so one one of the things, one of the pitfalls here is things that may be obvious to us because we're in the woods every day. We understand the ins and outs of all of our different properties is that we may assume that our customer knows certain things and it may be new to them. So some things fall through the cracks, some some communication doesn't happen can really jeopardize the relationship or even worse you're doing a lot of hard work and it goes unseen by the customer yeah a big term on that is you know the, uh, one of the guys told me he says i'd rather beg for forgiveness than ask you a question or your approval right? and i go well, how does how does that work well i i kind of knew you wanted it but i didn't want to bring it up because i figured if i if we didn't bring it up and i got into trouble i could always apologize to you and then then i could you get it done. And that never made any sense to me. Yeah. Never made any sense to me. Yeah, like don't be that guy, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so just communication, you can't go too far. And and a lot of this goes back to at the very beginning of the contract, setting the right expectation. How do you want to be communicated with? What's the best way? And I know, I think it was uh, episode 11 for us, we talked about the benefits of using a property management tool. Hands down, use something like that. Make sure that you're communicating with your customer because more too much communication is better than not enough right yeah you got to be honest you guys if you, just be honest with your client use the tools that are available to streamline their day and you'll win them every time you really will so chris as we wrap up episode number 14 here i want to give our listeners a couple of action items you can visit the show notes for this episode we always go deeper in the article Go to silvertracksoftware.com slash 14 to get some more information about the subject here, four things to avoid when dealing with your customers. Also, show our sponsors some love over at Paperless Proposal. They've got really, they truly do have an awesome product, a cool uh, application for your proposal process. Visit them at paperlessproposal.com slash silvertrack. They've got a special offer set up over there and some amazing content. But for now, I'm Johnny Page. I'm Chris Anderson. This was Silver Track Extra. We'll see you next time. This has been another episode of the Silver Track Extra. For more insider information, visit silvertracksoftware.com slash extra. Listen on the go by subscribing in iTunes. Want to hear your questions answered on the show? Visit silvertracksoftware.com slash questions to submit your requests.